Hello philosophers, welcome to an introduction to logic. This is uh, sp probably specifically logic for philosophers. Um, what is this thing called logic? Well first, uh, we should say that it was discovered by this gentleman right here, Aristotle. Uh, Aristotle lived from 384 to 322 BC and uh, he saw them as formal rules for correct reasoning. Um, he had uh, a number of different ways that he thought you could get to knowledge, and uh, but but logic was his his big one, um, and um, he's the first person to sort of um, to to write down all the rules and try to figure out what uh, what you can what you can conclude from what. So uh, we, we see him as sort of the father of logic, and so I'm going to teach you a little bit about the way Aristotle did logic. Now you should know. <clears throat> that modern logic is is a lot different than this um i, I wouldn't say that that uh, invalidates this logic um but uh yeah just this kind of stuff you're going to see later on is is uh in your logic careers if you pursue logic it's gonna be a lot different um but that doesn't mean that this is going to be uh worthless this, is, this will still be very useful um well anyway for aristotle um i I kind of want to give you like what 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 his ideas are that that gets him going in, in logic first, and then then we'll do the logic part. The first title: knowledge starts with perception, perceiving something. So let's say you see a tree. In some way, that tree comes to exist in your mind, and everything about the tree as it exists um, in the world is particular. It's that specific tree, right? It's not just any tree; it's that particular tree. Um, it's not any green either. It's it's that particular green, right? Um, that's the way things exist in the real world. However, uh, once we have this mental tree, uh, oops, this mental tree that you see right over here, right? Once we have that, uh, we can consider it in uh, not just as this specific tree over here. We can consider it in in a universal way. So instead of that six foot nine let's say, you know, green aspen, I don't know um, trees at all, I'm going to say this is an aspen, I'm pretty sure this is not an aspen, but let's just say, um, we can consider just tree itself, right? So here you see I'm gone from uh, from that specific aspen to just a tree in general. Now, I have this drawn, but that's kind of you know, misleading because, I mean, <clears throat> Excuse me. Tree can be any kind of tree, right? It can be a pine tree. It can be um, it can be six foot nine. It could be, I guess, two two foot tall. I don't know, right? So drawing it over here is a little misleading because um, you see the actual particular thing, but in your head, tree isn't any specific size. It's not any specific shape, right? So you really couldn't draw it. But let's just pretend that is just tree in general. And, and another thing you can do, you could get from from this. Um, perception that you got not just the thing itself but different aspects of the thing so for example um, you get green right now and again you know um, I shouldn't be really drawing a green shape here a green circle because uh, what you get from that is not a uh, green circle you get just green right and you can't really draw just green you have to draw a green shape or something like that. so really um, the the picture I drew is kind of misleading, but you kind of get the point. Um, so these universals that exist in our mind, uh, we can call them concepts. That's that's what they're called for Aristotle. Now, and also you should know that concepts for Aristotle are a lot different. That word means something a lot different than it means today for modern philosophers. But that's okay. You don't worry about that um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about for right now. Aristotle calls these things concepts, so you can have the concept of tree and the concept of green and concepts like that. Um, and we express these concepts uh, using terms. So my concept right here, I can refer to that using a term, tree. Or this concept of greenness, uh, uh, greenness I know sounds really weird, but sometimes weird sounding words make good philosophy I don't know why uh, my concept of green itself right I can I express using a term green so when I say concept I mean the thing in your mind when I say term I mean that thing that represents that concept right um, that's what uh, that's what term means for Aristotle now we have armed with our our concepts and let's say we come across a green tree 
Now we could put together our concepts of tree and green, right? Um, and we can say, uh, we, we can get uh, uh, what we could call a judgment, all right? So we've taken tree, we've taken green, and we've put them together and we've gotten a judgment. And we can say, uh, this, uh, the tree is green, all right? So notice I have a term here, tree, I have a uh, term here, green. This thing right here, we can call a proposition, all right? So my concepts, tree and green, come together to form a judgment and my um, my terms come together to form a proposition right? I know that that's so you I'm using the word proposition in a way that you, you normally wouldn't use it in everyday life it's proposition here means something more like a statement right something you say about the world so I'm using it in a lot different way than, than normally you would use it um, but you know, we don't have to stop there because, um, remember, our concepts aren't just about one specific tree, one specific instance of green. Uh, they're universals. They're just about trees in general. So I might look at um, a bunch of trees and, and realize that that's just part of what it is to be a tree, is to be green. And I can make this judgment. I could say, all trees are green. Um, so not just this, uh, the tree is green, but all trees are green. Um, it's it's like a universal statement, right? A statement about all kind of, all kinds of trees, but it's still a judgment, right? In my mind, um, although I don't have a picture of the judgment, um, and it's still a proposition that comes out here. All trees are green, so um, that is not to say that every single sentence is a proposition. For example, um, if I say, uh, "Are all trees green?" Right. That's not necessarily that's not a judgment. Right. I'm not I'm not putting these two concepts together and making a declaration about the world, but the way the world is or um, there are other sentences like dang. Right. There's no concept um, really even associated with dang. So it's not going to be a judgment anyway. But it's something you say really like to, to accomplish something like to let nobody know your frustration or just just to be. Uh, to, to release frustration or something like that. Oops, yeah, disconnected from wireless. Don't look at that, sorry. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so there, we're talking about a special kind of sentence, propositions. These are uh, statements about the world. And Aristotle believed that you can break down all propositions into one of four kinds of forms. The first type he can call is type A. Now, uh, don't be confused here because I'm going to say type A and I'm going to be using this this uh, letter A right here as kind of like a variable um, in math. Um, this is going to be a variable but for terms. All right, So that's what this A means, A and B right here, whereas type A is the name of the kind of proposition we're talking about. All A is B. So he, he thinks, so for example, if I say all trees are green, right? Trees substitutes in here in A green substitutes in here for B right so he thinks you can you can uh, break down all propositions into one of four types here's one of the types and if you think about it the way that what this is saying all trees are green what this kind of statement is saying is something like this think about all the green things and we'll put all green things in this big circle right here right what I'm saying here is trees are inside of that big circle. So let's let's put in this little circle. We'll put all the trees. Now we might have a circle out here that would be you know all uh, I don't know all grass, right? Um, we might have another circle over here that is all all emeralds. I don't know. So um, one of the things in this this uh, big circle of green things is trees. That's what that's what this statement is getting across. That's what you're trying to get across. Um, so that's one type. Another type is uh, type E, he says. No A is B. So for example, no trees are brown. That's probably a terrible example because there are brown trees. I apologize. Um, I don't know. It's late and I'm getting tired. So let's say, what, what would that look like? That would be something like this. Let's take all the brown things and put them in this circle, right? Well, trees, they're not in any... No, none of the trees are in this brown thing circle, right? So we can draw a circle around all the trees and say, these two circles, never the twain shall meet, right? Um, type I 
is uh, sum A is B. You might notice that uh, type A and E, here's type A, all A is B, type E, no A is B. These are kind of statements about everything of a, of a kind, right? Here, when we say sum A is B, we're actually saying something about just part of, uh, of a kind. So, for example, some trees are big. Um, if I have trees over here, I put all the trees in this circle and all the big things in this circle, I'm talking about this little section right in here, all right? Um, now, uh, just as, as a little precursor of something you're going to see later, um, are, uh, by saying some trees are big, one thing I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there are trees that are not big things. Notice, I, I'm just saying that some of the trees are big. Are there some trees that are not big, some trees that are out here? I don't know. Just by this statement, I, I haven't said that, right? Or are there some big things that aren't trees? I don't know. By this statement, all I've said is some trees are inside of the some big things, right? So I'm, I'm just making a claim about this thing right in here. Um, I probably should... Uh, suddenly, oh, wow, that's not at all where I was supposed to go. Um, I'm talking about this guy right in here. Forget that first red line. I'm talking about just this little this little section in here. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm making a claim a, a, about just one small section. I'm not making a claim about these sections on the outside. And then another one that's similar, uh, type O, some A is not B. So, for example, if I say some trees are not big. Now, by this statement, by the statement I've just made, I'm talking about uh, trees. This, this section, oh, gosh. Well, that is not even close to where I wanted that. Um, let's see, where's... I, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Here we go. I'm talking about this section right here, right? Some of the trees are outside of all of these big things, all right? So if I have this, uh, this circle where I put all the big things, I'm just saying some trees are outside of that. I don't know if there's some trees inside of that or not. I'm just saying that some trees are outside of that. So those are the four kinds of propositions that you can have, according to Aristotle. You can break them all down into these four types. Um, and there is, uh, there's more to be said about this. All right. So, um, for example, uh, well, you know, you know what? I better not just give any examples just to make sure that uh, I don't confuse anybody even more. But... Um, there are there are probably this this doesn't really capture everything. Some adjustments have been made to Aristotle's logic that 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 helps. But um, yeah, but this is gonna this is gonna be just fine for all of our purposes and probably for all purposes that you'd use these for. There there are some purposes that this won't work for, but for the most part, this is gonna help you out. All right, so those are the four kinds of, of categorical propositions. Notice they all have the word is in them. They all have some form of to be. All right, um, that's going to become important in, in a second here. But let's look at some the, some uh, interesting uh, some interesting propositions. So let's say um, um, I look at this sentence right here. Brees is an athlete. Drew Brees is an athlete. All right. Now notice I don't have any alls or nos or sums or anything like that. Um, but this is going to be a type A kind of. Um, a type A kind of uh, proposition. So every time you see a, a proposition that's about a, sp a specific singular thing, it's a type A. And the way you could look at it is this, all breeze is an athlete. That's a little confusing. This word all, and I, I'm gonna, let's see if this is, oh, it's gonna work over here. This word all over here, I can almost put in parentheses, <laughs> I can almost put in parentheses because it doesn't make a lot of sense. What I don't mean is every single piece of breeze is an athlete. I mean, all of the category of Breeze things, right? And that category consists of one person is also an athlete. So if I look at this, all of the things in the Breeze circle are in the athlete circle. That's sort of what that means. So you treat statements about people like that, like, like, like universals, like all A is B or no A is B. You don't treat them like sums unless it says, unless you have a sum in there. Um, here's another weird one. Let's say I say this. Pujols mashes. He mashes home runs, right? Um, here's going to be another all Pujols mashes. But one thing to notice, what we saw before, I showed you before, is that um, you kind of have to have the word is in there or are. <coughs> Excuse me. The word to be somewhere in there. So how do you do that here? Well, 
again, we use this weird all here. We don't mean every single piece of Pujols is a masher, right? We mean like all of the things in the category of Pujols um, that consist of that one guy, right? All Pujols, and then we put in the word is, and instead of mashes, since that was a verb, right, we have to kind of change that into a phrase. All Pujols is a person that mashes, right? So of all the people that mash home runs, right, Pujols is in there somewhere. That's sort of what that's that's what this kind of a statement was, uh, comes into. So notice you always have to have what is. If it's not there, you need to put it in there, and you need to uh, come up with some kind of uh, of a way to rewrite this this predicate so that it it, it makes sense. And then finally, a uh, final weird one is, is this kind of like identity statements. So let's say we say James Rhodes is War Machine. All right, here's War Machine right here. James Rhodes happens to be War Machine. He's the only War Machine there is. Um, this is a statement about a guy, right? A singular person. So it's going to be an all statement. All James Rhodes is War Machine. Of course, it doesn't really, not quite, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense when you say it that way. But that's what you mean. You mean a type A statement. Um, but it's tricky because when you say all James Rhodes is War Machine, it's also true that all War Machine is James Rhodes, right? Uh, they're, they're the same guy. So. Um, although what you said here, James Rhodes is War Machines, James Rhodes is War Machine. You said everybody in this category is also in this category. Notice there really is no green category outside of the James Rhodes. Really, what you have is this: James Rhodes and War Machine uh, is uh, they, they overlap totally, right? And there's only one thing in both both uh, classes. But by this statement, all James Rhodes is War Machine, or rather really this one, James Rhodes is War Machine. What you're saying is this. So you, 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 you oh, this, <laughs> this is awful. I don't know how that happened. But so what you're saying is this over here. You're saying something about James Rhodes in relation to the category of War Machine. You're not saying this over here, even though you know that it's true, this statement doesn't equal that statement. Um, it doesn't mean that it, it precludes that statement. So, um, it doesn't mean this statement is false, right? It doesn't mean this situation is false. Actually, this situation is true. But all that you've asserted with this proposition is this. You can go back and say, all war machine is also James Rhodes, and now we know it looks something like this. But just with this proposition alone, you've asserted this. You, do, you haven't said it, asserted anything outside of the James Rhodes, uh, this war machine green. You, you don't know if that green out here exists or not. Um, you're just saying something about uh, James Rhodes inside of that war machine uh, category. That may sound a little confusing. I don't know. I hope not. Um, all right. Well, so here's some translations to practice. Here are some propos uh, propositions that I, I, I'd like you to uh, write down, translate them into one of those four forms that we saw before. Um, while you're doing so, I'll give you the answers. Um, but what I'd like you to do is try them out and pause the video, try them out, um, and then unpause it to, to hear what the answers are. If you'd like to, you can go, you know, one first and then uh, unpause it and see what I do, the next one, and unpause it. A few tricks are in here, though. Number one, uh, not every one of these are propositions, so if it's not a proposition, you could just write none, as in there, there's no form to it. Um, so, yeah. Um, Pause the video. Don't cheat because it's you're not going to learn it as well if you don't try it yourself. Um, here's number one. We all know oranges are the best fruit. Well, this we all know is kind of just extraneous material, right? What you're saying is oranges are the best fruit. So here's what we'll say. All oranges are the best fruit. Notice this are is the same thing as is. Right? So all oranges are the best fruit. Dogs are the best, right? That one is... All dogs are the best, or you could say the best pets, or the best whatever it is that you're trying to say. Holy guacamole. This doesn't actually say anything about the real world. You're just saying holy guacamole is like an expression, so that's just none. That's not a proposition at all. Some like it hot. This translates to some people are people that like it hot. Notice some, and I don't say what, what sum that is. You're going to have to fill that in, right? And then, uh, like it hot. There's no is or are in here, so you have to fill that in. Uh, fill that in. And then, 
make the like it hot make sense. People that like it hot. Is a bulldog a good pet? Now this is a question, so questions don't make any statements about the world, so this is not a proposition. I have a hard time believing that. Notice this isn't a proposition about the thing that, that you're having a hard time believing. This is a proposition about you, right? So I, or you could say all of I, am a person that has a hard time believing that. That am is the same thing as is or are. It's the verb to be. So um, all I is a person that has a hard time believing that, something like that. Dude, nobody does the Dougie anymore. Notice this word, dude, that's extraneous. That's that's what you say to get the person's attention, and this is the proposition. Nobody does the Dougie anymore. There's no word to be, so we're going to have to fill that in. Um, and it's going to be this. No person is a person that does the Dougie anymore. Notice this is a, a type E proposition. If you have, uh, I'm afraid to push this button because I don't know where it's going to end up. There it is right there. Let's see. Yeah, so you have the no person. And then you have the is, then a person that does the Dougie anymore. So this is a no A is B. You know, there are some of us that don't like cilantro. All right, for this one, the you know is, is also extraneous. Um, this one, you could translate to something like this. Some people are not people that like cilantro. So notice this is a some are not, this is a type of. O proposition. You could actually also write this as a type I. If you wrote it like this, if you said some people are, and then your next term is people that don't like cilantro, that works too. There's there's there are kind of two ways that you could write that if you wanted to. Um, you'd be changing what the term is though. You'd be changing uh, what what the concept is. In one case, you're you're working with the term people that like cilantro, and in another case, you're working with the term people that don't like cilantro. But either one works. A few burritos have cheese. So notice here, you're not saying something about every single burrito. You're saying something about some of the burritos. So this is, some burritos have cheese. The next one, a lot of burritos have salsa. Now this is tricky because we said a few here, and some sounds like a few. We say a lot, and you all of a sudden think, but a lot, that's a lot more than some, right? Yeah, but you're still not saying something about every single burrito. You're saying something about uh, some burritos. Some burritos have salsa. So really, these have the same proposition of form. This is one of the drawbacks of, of, of working like aerosol. You, you lose quantity. I mean, you could fill it in there if you wanted to. Um, there are ways to do that, but it, it makes it kind of complicated. Um, but like I said, for the most part, this stuff is gonna is gonna uh, help you just fine. All right, so um, here's the the last ten that we have. Go ahead and do the same thing uh, for these ones. My slippery my slippers are furry. All right, um, this is a statement about all of my slipper. Well, is it, notice it's not a statement about every single one of my slippers. But really, when I say my slippers, I'm referring to one thing in a class. Um, so, all my slippers are furry things. It's kind of like I, was, I would say my brother. It, my brother is funny, right? So, all my brother is a funny person. Some of that, right? So, this is in type A proposition. There ain't enough money in the world for me to eat Brussels sprouts. So... We're saying something about all of the money in the world, but it's a negative statement. So uh, you could say this, no amount of money in the world is enough for me to eat Brussels sprouts. So this is a no A is B. Um, you could rewrite this as, an, as a type A if you wanted to. Um, again, you'd, like, like I said before, you'd be changing the terms, but this is probably the best way to write this one. Big ups, huh? Big gulps high is not saying anything about the world. Um, if you wanted to say, like, you have big gulps, that would be a proposition. But this one, you're just asking a question, so this is not a proposition. Uh, extra points if you knew that quote came from Dumb and Dumber. All right. Not all dogs go to heaven. Not all dogs go to heaven. This is kind of a tricky one. It looks like you're saying, you, you see the word all, and you see the word no, it seems like you're saying no dogs go to heaven. But that's not what you're saying, right? 
what you're saying is something like this. Some dogs are not dogs that go to heaven. So some A is not B. This is a type uh, O proposition. So the not all, you, sh you, sh you should probably take note on this. The, take note that not all means some are not. Some is not. Um, whenever you see a not all, that's a type O. Uh, sometimes you just have to ask yourself. This is a type I. Sometimes are times that you have to ask yourself. Apples are delicious. This one is fairly easy. All apples are delicious. You could say delicious things if you wanted to. Celebrate good times. Celebrate good times is actually a command. You're not saying uh, that celebrate that you are celebrating good times. You are telling somebody, hey, you, celebrate good times. So that is not uh, a proposition. Time waits for no man. Now, when you see time waits for no man, this is like a, oh, what do you call it? This is a, um, oh, I can't think of what it is. Stuff like that went over like a lead balloon, uh, you know, um, I can't think of what those things are called. Anyway, um, sometimes they don't mean what they literally say. Um, but for this one, let's just say we, we took it literally. Um, and this is what it says. All time is a thing that waits for no man. Now, you see, when I think it, I take it literally and write out the proposition, it, it seems like it doesn't make sense, right? Like, wait, time is, is that really what you're telling me? That time is a thing and it's, it's a thing that doesn't wait for man? No, what you're really saying is that time keeps going on. I don't know. Anyway. Um, that's, if you took it literally, that's what it would mean. Boom goes the dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. What you're saying is kind of, this is kind of backwards, actually. You're saying all dynamite is a thing that goes boom. Um, notice, I mean, this is, it's said backwards for effect, right? So sometimes you have to think about what is being said of what. Here, you're not saying dynamite is being said of boom you're saying boom is being said of dynamite so all dynamite is a thing that goes boom finally mosquitoes are annoying i've been bit all night long that's the reason why i thought this one up and i'm going a little crazy it's late at night so mosquitoes are annoying and this is, should be an easy one all mosquitoes are annoying things and that is it